You're listening to Lunch with the Finance Bunch, bringing money talk you can understand. We have someone in our studio today that I've been waiting to interview and to meet for a long time. Her name is Annie Tevlin, and she is the CEO of Her World. And in Her World, she's a skincare expert. She has her own skincare line, and she's a podcaster. So we want to get a little bit more information from you on a whole lot of fronts. Very nice. Awesome. I'm very happy to be here. Good, good, <laughs> good, good. So, Annie, we want to jump right into it, and we want to start talking to you. When I talk to you on the phone and with our co-friend, you know, our mutual friend, we talked about how successful your company is and has been over the last five years. And I think it's key that we talk about this with our audience because there are a lot of people who want to start businesses, especially skincare lines and lipsticks and all those types of things. And they may not know what goes into creating that kind of company so and making it successful. So that's why we have you here today. There's a lot that goes into it. So I'm happy <laughs> to be here to debunk any myths about how easy it is. Excellent. <laughs> now, Annie, where are you originally from? I was born and raised in Washington, D.C., in Georgetown. Ooh, okay. So yeah. you're East Coast girl. That's what yeah. I mean. Yeah, we like that, don't we, DJ Bander? East Coast all day. Really? Hell yeah. Where are you guys from? New York. Brooklyn. <laughs> awesome. In the building. Yay, yeah. So what made you decide to start a skincare line? I mean, I had no plans to start a skincare line. I was a film major. I wanted to be a music video director. Okay. Um, that's why I originally moved out to LA. Interesting. But I was hit with um, adult onset acne when I was 27 years old. Oh, wow. I tell people all the time that I was like a proactive commercial um, it wow. happened out of nowhere. I was living in DC. Obviously there was a ton of humidity. I went to school in the Midwest, a lot of humidity. And then I moved to LA when I was 23. And after about like three years here, my skin freaked out. Wow. Um, I, in working in music videos, I was shadowing makeup artists. So mm -hmm. I had a lot of access to the beauty industry right. and a lot of people. Um, when the music video industry kind of bottomed out and copyright infringement and that whole world happened in 07, mm -hmm. 08, oh, yeah. um, Longcomb had hunted me to be a makeup artist for them. And uh, that's really when it started, like most of the acne started. And uh, with friends in the industry, everybody from Clarins and Clinique and, you know, NARS, all these people oh, were like, wow. try this, try this, this will work on your acne. Nothing did. I spent a shit ton of money on product. I went to countless dermatologists and nothing worked. And, um, I decided to take matters into my own hands and I went back to school. UCLA had a cosmetic chemistry program. I went through the program three times, wow. learned everything there was to learn about what works on the skin versus what is marketed to us mm -hmm. right. as working. And those are two very Probably different, different things. things. Yeah. Um, and uh, like, you know, I guess the old story goes, I started making product in my kitchen and made a product that got rid of my own acne in 32 days. That's so cool because it's like wow. a personal story. Exactly. You know, is, is that some? Is that in certain ways also related to how you came up with the name? I find it really interesting. It's like skin out. It's very catchy. You know, <laughs> right. it, it, it's very direct and it's something that people would remember and, and you don't have to write it down. I exactly. love that. I love names like that. I love branding that's like that. What, what's I the really appreciate that? that. Yeah, I think um, owls are messengers of wisdom mm. Um, mm. and uh, owls heads rotate. Um, in far more degrees than a human head. So we are constantly looking in the industry from different perspectives and giving an honest, wise approach to skincare. It's Love not that. about marketing and, you know, uh, faking the funk. It's about like delivering true, effective skincare products that work and help people. So when, about when did you come up with that name? How long have you been in business? Um, we have been in business for five years. Uh, it, Honestly, I had like a private Facebook group. Um, I could invite someone and then if you were a member, you could invite someone yes. and so on and so on. And it grew, this was before you could buy followers, but it grew to like <laughs> 1600 people in the course of four months. And it was an opportunity for me to give skincare advice, um, makeup advice because I was a makeup artist and help people. Like we did daily mantras. It was just, it was a really cool beta test looking back on what people want out of their skincare and their yes. beauty. Um, and I remember I just kind of became my alter ego. I was the skin owl. So I was like a messenger of wisdom in a very confusing industry. Very cool. And, um, I showed my before and after photos. I showed the product to people in the group. I said, people could PayPal me. And that was five years ago. And at that point people were like sending in pictures of their sons and their teenage daughters and their 35 year old post pregnancy skin, all of this stuff. And people were like, we need to buy more of this. And 
that was the beginning. I created a landing page and a logo and excellent. Oh, wow. Yeah. Luckily I had a friend who was a graphic artist who could do all that. Who could do all that. Yeah. You know, and skin, <laughs> you know, your skin is the first thing you see. Yes. Right? And it's the largest organ on your body. So your whole body is skin. I feel like people and don't realize that it's an organ. It no. is. And, and it's like, it's, people, it's just as important as like taking care of your stomach or your kidneys or exactly. your liver. People Absolutely. don't even think about that, but the, but anything that can hurt you from the outside goes right through your skin. Exactly. Absolutely. Now, as a makeup artist, I know you've seen some, you know, what I see in makeup artistry a lot of times is cover up of what's underneath, which is the skin instead of protecting, you know, healing the skin. So I like your approach, heal the skin and then put the makeup on it, mm -hmm. you know? And so how did you get your process started? So now you have a business, mm -hmm. like it's, it's small, but it's a business. Mm -hmm. yes. And then how, what did you do to, and what are the things that you put in place so that you can move forward as a businesswoman now that you've had your landing page, you have your website, you have all these things in place. What did you do to move forward so that now you have people who are looking at you, they're sending you their pictures. You know how that is. Yeah. Like you go, okay, this is a real business. What do I do next? So what do you do next? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I never went to business school. I didn't know a mm. thing about business. I just knew how to treat people. That's always been my thing. I okay. think I have a lot of integrity. I care deeply for people mm. and I want to help people. Um, if it happens to be with their skin in the long run, if you help someone with their skin or something that they're self-conscious about, you help them with a lot more. So I didn't hire on a bunch of people. There was no funding. I've never had an investment. Um, my parents didn't give me, you know what I mean? I don't have, I don't come from a trust fund. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, I'm working out of my house. I hired an intern that then became someone that I paid hourly. She helped respond to customer service emails. Um, I bought, you know, USPS. If you sign up with USPS or UPS, you get free boxes. So I didn't mm -hmm. pay on any right. of the packaging materials. Uh, recycled materials um, happen to be really inexpensive because mm. they're not that cute all the time. Right. So um, I just, I really, any money I made from my job at the time, which was, mm -hmm. I was selling handbags for a company that has since gone under, but I was walking dogs and selling handbags and any extra money I made from that, I put into Skin Owl. So um, I, I racked up credit card debt. I mean, I knew from very early on, like this is, if I telescope and I take the long view on this, like, invest now, front load now, and it'll all work out in the end. And that's, that's because of my passion and, and because I knew that there was a void in the industry for I something that. that was, you know, really going to help people. Yeah. A lot of our, you know, listeners are constantly thinking to themselves like, okay, how, how do I take the steps from what you're talking about mm -hmm. to um, actually putting this company into action? And I think, you know, one thing that I would find really interesting, especially with a company like yours is how did you know exactly what to do? Like, did you consult like a scientist? Did you have, um, you know, you know, biotic specialists, those type of people involved? Uh, did you research the science yourself? How did that all take place? That's a place? great question. Yeah, yeah, I think, to be honest, I learned so much from this class at UCLA. My teacher was like the godmother of skincare and especially in green beauty. Hmm. And when it comes to green beauty, the formulations are simpler. The ingredient deck isn't 50 ingredients long. Right. You're dealing with pure plant oils. You're dealing with natural preservatives like vitamin E and aloe and um, emulsifiers and surfactants that are pretty easy to, um, with with intelligence and knowledge and, and science um, and understanding of all of that, you can mix them together, create a preservative system and sell them. And right. I can go into the whole FDA approval thing, which is not, there is no FDA approval. Essentially, right. I didn't have to go through a series of, um, you know, audits and people coming to the house and testing the products. Like people should know that when you're working and you're building a skincare company, the only thing that has to be um, correct and, uh, and valid is a label. Mm. So you just have to say what the product is. Is it a moisturizer, a toner, you know, blah, blah, blah. A and cleanser. what it contains, basically. Yeah, what is the, the um, what's the ingredient deck? I could write that there was um, manure in my product and it's fine. I can put it on right. the ingredient deck. Yeah. It's use at your own risk. It really doesn't matter. And you see that all the time with food and a lot of skincare products and up to this point that are really detrimental to people's health. Um, well, that tells you folks, read the label. Yeah, read exactly. the label. I think like <laughs> for me, just going back to the original question, I I spent a lot of time creating product, sourcing packaging. So mm. making a label, again, I had a graphic artist friend, so she gave me great rates compared to outsourcing that, mm -hmm. um, creating a logo and then making everything out of my kitchen. So I got to go past all the factory 
uh, costs and outsourcing. We shipped everything internally. We still mm -hmm. do. So I didn't have to worry about a distribution company. And the first person I hired was a publicist. Cool. And she worked with me um, because it's one thing to brag about your own brand. It's another thing to have someone else brag about your brand. And that changed everything. When other people started talking about Skin Owl, that's when everything took off. That's amazing. That is amazing. I love it. I, I don't want to run past this point, And I think it's a great point that you make. And I want to add more value to the product that you have come up with. Um, when you're purchasing, when you're purchasing a product, you want to make sure the public understands that even if it's over the counter, there is no FDA oversight committee making sure that these products are working in the way they should. Mm -hmm. Those products are no, in no way or form more valid than the ones that you are making. Correct. Absolutely. You know? And so I didn't want to run past that point because I think people don't understand that. They think if they buy it across the counter that it gives it some type of validity. And it doesn't. It has the same toxic ingredients in it as you don't want in your skincare products, as you don't want in your lotions and your potions. You don't want those things. And they're in there for preservative reasons. And I don't want to go into a whole lot of detail about that, but I just didn't want us to run past that point. Yeah, and you have to be your own detective. Exactly. I mean, the food industry is probably what gets the most care. Yes. Um, with concern to the FDA, the beauty industry has been highly unregulated, and hopefully that will change. Yes, Because these be. are habitual products that men and women are using every day. I mean, we've heard all about Johnson & Johnson with the baby powder. That's right. Yeah. Talc and, you know, other companies that I won't name that have gotten into, you know, trouble just because of formulations. You've really just got to do your own research. And there's a lot of really cool apps out there to help people with that, too. Exactly. So. Very cool. Okay, because I didn't want to run past that. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> yes. And so now I want to talk a little bit about, you know, when you're pricing things. How, how do you know how to price something in the market so that it's saleable, but it adds value and, you know, you can make a profit. How do you do that? Yeah. I mean, so much of that changes in the beginning. Like, so obviously your cost of goods go down once you're increasing the quantity of right. those goods. So in the beginning, I'm ordering a hundred Boston round amber bottles. And the cost of that is much higher than five years down the line. And I'm able to buy 5,000, 10,000 of them. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, you should be, um, it's a cool place to be because if your if your business grows, you can expect that your whatever you price your product at will be more savory as time goes on because exactly. you'll be cutting into the cost of goods. Um, I mean, essentially, you whatever your minimums are and whatever quantities you're purchasing at, you create a cost price based on that. So the cost of the label, the cost of the bottle, the cost of the jar, the cost of the eyedropper, the cost of the pump. Um, you're manually filling it. That's cost because it's time. That's right. um, and then obviously your ingredients, your oils, your creams, your essential oils, all of those things. You whittle it down to if I'm buying this in a five gallon and I have 100 bottles to fill, you know, it's a mathematical equation. Right. You have and your cost. You scale it to margin. You scale exactly. it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You scale it to margin. Your cost becomes your wholesale. Absolutely. And then your wholesale is usually doubled to become your retail. Right. Awesome. Yeah. I like that. Like that. About the business right here. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> That's what we like. And like, you've had this business now for five years. Yes. And how many products did you start out with? Um, I started out with the Geranium Beauty Drops, which was the product that got rid of my acne. Okay. And then that did really well. And then I created two other variations of that product, the Lavender Beauty Drops and the Clary Sage Beauty Drops. Mm -hmm. And um, that was for two different skin, other skin concerns. So it started as three and then we introduced one product a year um, in 2014, which was an eye cream. 2015, we had a beauty steam and a neck treatment. And then 17 and 18, Is we now have really 17 skews. So Ooh. we, I was like, yeah, for uh, like a formulating queen. It was <laughs> crazy. It. We Love People were it. like, we need more skin owl. And right. yeah, so, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a little station break and we'll be right back because I want to talk to you more about how you scaled up all those products. How's that? Deal. This is Miss Charlene, and you're on Lunch with the Finance Bunch with DJ Bander, my co-host. And right. we'll be right back. See you soon. And we're back. This is Miss Charlene and my co-host, DJ Bander, on hello, Dash hello. Talk X. And this is Lunch with the Finance Bunch. And we have in our studio, her name is Annie Telvin, and she is the Skin Care Owl owner. And so we were talking about at first, you know, getting to know you a little bit and about your company. But I really want to go into some depth because in five years, you've been able to take your company from one product that worked on your skin and everyone fell in love with. And then the demand got for more and more and more. 
So I wanted to see how did you scale that? Because in the way that you scaled your company, you made it very successful. So when we talked, you said you came up with the one product and then two. And then how did you scale from there? Yeah, I think I, you know, we communicate a lot with our customers. We have a lot of engagement. So much of it was customer interest. Right. You know, what do you guys want next? I think we alternated with very user-friendly, habitual products like a moisturizer, an eye cream, and then explored with some other supplemental products like a neck treatment, which not everybody needs, but could be a one-off product that could, um, you know, garner some interest of the brand. Not many people in the green beauty industry have a neck treatment. So and it's needed I took note eventually. Of that. Yeah, I mean, it's like start early. Exactly. Um, <laughs> and things like the beauty steam was coupled with a cleanser. So we, I kind of bopped around with um, more innovative products, um, less seen products in the green beauty industry with more like uh, everyday products. Um, and I, I mean, I wish I could jog my memory to how it all begins, but really it's just... I want to keep the momentum of the brand. I want to keep people interested. And the way to do that is to share your story of how you're formulating products with integrity. I well, mean, you, yeah. you built a base of customers, loyal customers who trust you. Mm-hmm. That's what it sounds like too. And by adding things that they're asking for, they're trusting you that you're going to formulate something that's going to help them. So along with your branding person and yourself, it's it's like you grew this organic company that has so much integrity people are just jumping on board because they trust you yeah right. is that it's, it? it's really like I again I think people and people know this because of my story they know I wasn't a business aficionado they know that I didn't come from money it was um, a labor of love and I was just a girl with acne I was just just like everybody else I was someone who had really bad skin and couldn't get to the bottom of why I ate right um you know, I wasn't on birth control. I, I didn't have allergies. Um, I was using good products and good ingredients. Like why me? And so I, I, I am them and they are me. I am the average person who that's cool. yes. breaks out and just gets acne later right. in her life. Yeah, that's really cool because it's like some, everything at the end of the day, sometimes things come down to genetics. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, people have the situation that they do, you know? Yes. So as you started um, with the initial product, what, what was it that really sort of like, did you started generating like capital from those original products and that's when you decided to bring new people on? How did that whole process take place? How were you no, able to do I that? Mean, we weren't profitable until 2016. Um, and I made my logo at the end of 2012. So mm. for the first three years, whatever, I mean, I, it was a wash. Right. It was a wash. Right. Like I was right. living off of credit card debt, um, you know, birthday checks. I was walking dogs on the side. Um, for cash. And um, it just, I think 2016 is when it all really blew up. And and I say this a lot about PR that um, having a publicist is really what allowed the brand to grow. Because when you have a publicist, it's not a one night stand, it's a marriage. Do not expect greatness overnight. You need to invest. People need to see your product like at least six times before they even know what your brand name is. And people need to see it like 10 times before they even buy it. No, absolutely. So it's been a um, like up at dawn pride swallowing siege to quote Jerry Maguire (laughs) in terms of getting this brand into the minds and the hands of people. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I think that's something so interesting and I love like meeting entrepreneurs that have that, you know, that stick with their vision because I think that a lot of times what what our listeners and people who, and it's something I think we've talked about this on the show a lot, um, you know, with where society's at is everybody kind of wants that like quick success, the quick pop, and um, it really takes years. It takes years building the company. Yeah, and you see it now. I mean, the beauty industry is having a moment. Green beauty is definitely having a moment. Yeah. People are getting sicker. It's a it's an interesting time to be alive, especially as a young person, because you're seeing things happen to you that um, I think at an earlier rate, um, mm-hmm. uh, especially with like brand, breast cancer in women and um, just as a whole allergies. So I think this is a very saturated market. People are like, oh, this is a hot ticket. I'm gonna make something or celebrities are coming out with their own lines. It's a, it's just very saturated. And what's, I think the brands that are gonna stand out are the people that had people's trust from the beginning. Right. Like right. before Green Beauty was like a thing, mm-hmm. who were the people that were really invested in the health of others from a very early standpoint? Well, that makes me think of another question. Do you look for the right people to get your stuff placed in the right thing? Or you just go straight for like, you know, the, the units, like just, Find me online. You like it, buy it. Yeah. Cash me the check. You know, the influencer thing is not my thing. Um, 
I think it's really hard to navigate what is authentic mm -hmm. in that world. For sure. Um, and also, like, I'm big into the micro influencer, not the macro influencer. I think the yeah. influencer that has 250,000 followers, 1 million followers, they're so they're in that business. They're mm -hmm. talking about a lot of different things other than right. Skin Owl. And if I was witnessing that, I might question the integrity of it or the authenticity or the true connection that that person has to the brand, or are they just doing this to pay their bills yeah, that's um, to point. be completely transparent. The micro influencer, someone who has 5,000 solid fans right. who right. is like hanging on the, you know, every word that they're saying, or the mom who's just like at home and has like 7,200 followers, but man, mm -hmm. those followers are engaged. It's all, it's really about engagement. And, you know, I think that people trust Skin Owl um, and I want people to trust the people that we put the product in the hands no, of. I love that you say that because you're one of the first people that I've heard who actually understands that concept. You know, I've worked for different companies before, like Verizon, where they did that exactly that. They were much more interested in the micro-influencer. They'd much prefer to have a team of 10 micro-influencers than one or two posts from, you know, an Ariana Grande. Because mm -hmm. it's like, okay, what are they paying her to do that? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, you we, know, versus people who have real organic following where yes. people aren't weren't thinking about all that. They're just like, oh, what is, you know, what is Becky up to today? Or what is Sarah Absolutely. up to today? And like, what are they talking about? And it's not based on like yeah. who paid them. They're in reach. You <laughs> yeah. know, those are people that are real. We had Khloe Kardashian write about our body oil four times, authentically four times. We didn't pay her. She fell in love with it. That's great. And wow. I mean, you, you can't know, show anything that you think was a, a direct result of no, that. No, I mean, we had like a little jump in sales, mm -hmm. but it really, that's not how the human brain always, always works. works. No, it's I It's not get that. like you see something and I mean, sometimes it does. Like if you are obsessed with the rock and rock is using a certain supplement, then maybe you might go and buy that supplement. But it really has, I feel like the rock would really have to connect to that supplement in order for someone to buy it. Make Otherwise, appearances. I got to be like a campaign. Yeah. Almost. The rock would have to be invested in it. So I think the investment in a brand is what actually allows a macro influencer to drive mm -hmm. a brand to a higher sales um, bracket. So, Otherwise. So, yeah. so do you, so, oh, no. sorry. No, I was just going to ask about like how many units you think that you would say you move per month. And, and do you think that like that's mainly an e-commerce side of the business? Yeah. I mean, we, I will say this, our business has quadrupled every year that it's been in business. Um, we, 51% uh, of our business is .com, which is awesome. Um, especially like we we had a 22% increase this holiday season, but we had a 37% increase in wholesalers. Wow. wow. So that's amazing. I mean, to know that you have more people wholesaling your product, which is Obviously, when we sell to a wholesaler, we're not selling that product at retail. We're selling it at wholesale. So we take a, a cut on the on the revenue, mm. but we were able to maintain that dot com customer. So whoever likes shopping with us last year uh, in 2017 or exactly two years ago now likes shopping with us still in 2018, That's which is awesome. an awesome thing. Sorry, what were we going to say? That's over there? amazing. I was going to say, are do, are you feeling? And what I'm seeing here is that. Let me post this in a question. Do you think that people are looking for more authenticity? Mm. Is that what you think? Mm -hmm. Is that what it is? Yes, I have a, that is Skin Owl. I mean, I, I could go on and on about this, but our tagline is where skincare becomes self-care. Um, mm. I think the cash money, bling, bling, all of that stuff that was happening in the early 2000s where it was like, check me out. I am valid because I have all, all of these stuff. riches. Mm. That's old. Yeah, that's Nobody over. wants it anymore. The T-Pain, Lil Wayne days are over. Yeah. People want authenticity. People want singer-songwriters, you know, have increased in terms of uh, yes. just overall, I think, enjoyment. Um, and there's so much information that we're getting these days on because of social media that I think it's very, it's it's the most important time for people to sift through what's real and what's not. And what's not, yeah. And that is why Skin Owl... I believe is thriving because we are rich in the things that matter. That's cool. How Very many cool. employees does it take to create this product and push it out? I was going to say, it sounds like an operation. Have, it sounds there. like a huge operation to me. So how many people do you have I, in I your employee? Like, I, I have this vision of like all these guys like, with lab coats and right? masks on and like in <laughs> this big insane. steel room. <laughs> exactly. Is that just in my head or what? No, I mean, people are <laughs> oh, I'll just drop it off. And I'm like, no, mm -mm, it's proprietary. You definitely cannot drop anything off. Cause okay. So just to set the scene, Everything is done out of my house. 
Uh, wow. Okay, so let me tell you all the things that are that's done out of the house. That's called low capital expenditures. Everybody. <laughs> yeah. Really. New, new tech word for you. CapEx <laughs> on zero. Exactly. exactly. People, want, people are always like, why aren't you outsourcing some of this stuff? And I'll tell you why. There is something that happens when you do the following inside of your home yep. where there's couches and a coffee machine and TV, yes. and there's a certain type of comfort that it. doesn't happen in an office. Yes. And in that office, we are... Shipping every single order to every single customer, shipping every single order to all uh, domestic and international accounts. I am in charge of all the social media, uh, all customer services run out of my house, all formulating. So every single thing, we get the jar, we get the bare eyedropper that then gets a label on it, which is hand applied, hand filled, hand mixed, handmade. Um, everything that has to do with the brand is done in house. The only things that are done out house um, are a publicist, and I have brand ambassadors in specific state states to go and hang out at stores that Skin Owl is sold in. Yeah, I'm so glad you mentioned that <laughs> yes. because I think that is something that is so important for these up and coming entrepreneurs to understand. You know, like it doesn't mean that you're successful because you've got the fancy big office with all the right. lights and the tall windows because that can literally be the, the that it could be what bankrupts you and puts you on the street. That's right. Is that office building? Yes. People don't understand. I mean, I'm the exact same way. I run my production company right out of my place. Another thing is it's a tax write off on your rent. You, yes. you obviously pay much less rent than the average person because you, you have an office in the in your place. And that's something that's really important. So I love that you brought that up. Yeah, I have no shame. I have no shame. There's like, no, no, it's no shame. It's smart business. Why have more expenses than you need? It's like at the end of the day, um, the only thing, the only relationship that you need to be happy with is your bank account. Yeah, exactly. and I don't want to look big. I want to be big. And exactly. the way to be big is to be smart. And, you know, these are the golden years. The, I say this all the time. Like at some point, we will need to move out of the house. And like, you know, I'm newly married. I My house has never been my own. I'm excited to just like, have me and my husband be the home. only two people that have the footsteps in the house. Right. But like for now, these are the good old days. And it's like at some point when Skin Owl grows even more, we'll look back and say, my God, remember when we could do a half a million dollar business outside of my home? Yes. That's an amazing feat. And everything I set out to accomplish, I feel like I already have. Like anything from here on out is just icing on the cake. That's amazing. And also, what amount of production comes out of that house? I know you mentioned it a little bit earlier, but how much production do you do on a monthly basis? I mean, I would say about a thousand of each SKU moves out of that house a month. Wow. We have 17 SKUs, so that's 17,000 products that are being made by hand. That's great. A day in the life of Annie. What does that look like? And I like? still have my nail polish and on. And you still have your that's nail it. polish on. <laughs> it is crazy. I, I would invite you to come and see how it, it's, it's, I, cannot say enough about my team. The efficiency is, I've never seen anything like it. The stars have aligned. It's very special. I can't, I think that when you love one another, you work harder. You work harder. Oh, absolutely. When yes. you're working for a common cause, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you about that. Like your team, what does that consist of? What does that look like? Like how many people are there? Yes. Um, so uh, there's myself who does like all of the overhead stuff, mm -hmm. all of the accounting, all of the social media. Then I have Jasmine who is the director of operations. Um, she helps with the customer service emails, anything we're out of stock on, inventory, um, and all orders. So customer, domestic, and international wholesale orders. Mm. Then um, Maple is kind of like Jasmine's assistant. She's gonna be taking over Jasmine's position, and Jasmine is going to be stepping into director of brand collaborations. So um, if someone wanted to do, you know, like a Mackie Berry frozen yogurt or somebody wanted to do a panel or a discussion in yes. store or to educate a certain business or office on healthy skincare. She's going to be doing all of that. Um, Therese and Chris um, are the only other two people that work in my house. Therese is our master filler. So she gets a fill list at the beginning of the day and everything's collaborative, right. but she's like, okay, I need to fill 200 of this, hundred of this. And that's her job. That's her only thing to do. She's also a brand ambassador. So she'll go into store because she knows everything about how the product is formulated because mm. she does it. Right. Um, and she'll train people in like the detox market, credo, some of these boutiques. And then Chris is our photographer. So we document everything that happens in the office. Um, it's like our own little reality show. We share it on social media yes. and that's it. And then we have our publicist. Wow, efficient is lean crew. and mean. It's insane. Yes. Lean and mean. It is insane. Yes. I don't know how it happens, but it does. But it does. But you've grown <laughs> that team over time. It didn't just start out that way. You did just didn't have like five people mm -hmm. all show up at the same time and you're like, boom, no. this is what it is. No, I mean I had one person and that is what um, you know, that is what represented business at that time. Mm -hmm. And I had an intern. Uh, but 
now, no, I, it's everybody, ha everybody has a ton of stuff to do right. all day, but it is also a 24 hour work week because I'm big into a work life balance. So people work from nine 30 to three 30, just Monday through Thursday. So I that's another that. thing to consider that we're doing all of this in 24 hours with the three day weekends. <laughs> yes. It. Wow. I love it. You know what? We're going to take another station back break and then we're going to come back. And I want to talk to you a little bit more about, you know, the things that matter to you most. How's that? Deal. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. We're back again. I'm DJ Bender. You're listening to Lunch with the Finance Bunch. We're here with Anne, the owner of the amazing skincare company, Skin Al. So, Anne, I had a quick question for you. This is something that I think everybody kind of looks at, especially in the beginning of the new year. And it's where am I? And where do I see myself in five years? So, and where do you see Skinel in your life in five years? Oh my gosh. Um, oh my God. When I think about the last five years, that could mean anything. Well, this is what I will say. Skin Owl is obviously a skincare line. Um, in the last year, I launched a podcast called Off the Record. And I also launched a dinner series, which is an opportunity for me to dig into the self-care side of mm -hmm. our tagline. Um, 18 people meet at a table they've never met before, all different walks of life. And we break bread. We do a self-care workshop. It's very psychological. People sometimes cry and leave. Mm. Um, it's a lot, but it is an opportunity for us to allow people to dial down and process the life that they're living in an otherwise very chaotic existence right now. Right. Um, and that's just because I'm a kid of the 80s. I'm 37 years old. And it's important that people know how to play outside again. Right. Um, uh, so over the next five years, I want to increase that conversation. Like I want to do a TED talk. I want to do um, panels and discussions. And I want to go on tour and talk to people about how to kind of detox from this crazy life that we're living um, and get back down to basics. Um, on a skincare front, I definitely see probably over the next five years, like four to five new products, but that would probably be it. Mm -hmm. I don't want a line that is like, you know, like all the department store brands, it's like right. constantly new. And then you're like, well, I've just bought this. And now what am I supposed to do with that? Now I'm not supposed to use this anymore. That's not what I'm about. I think Very cool. simple, effective skincare is in the future, but a more hands-on approach to the psychological side of things. That, Love it. Yeah. Wow. And Stress so people out. Another thing <clears throat> we'd like to know is what was your most memorable paycheck? Oh my God. Um, the most memorable. We don't need to know how much it was unless you want to tell us, but the most memorable. The most memorable paycheck mm -hmm. was my first order from um, an international stockist. They were my first international stockist. And it was the first order that I ever had that was five digits. Wow. And it wasn't high. I mean, it was like $10,000, yeah. but I remember being like, but still, oh my God, I am worthy. Like yes. I felt like totally. this company wants to buy that much of Skin Owl. That's crazy. And I was able to pay off a credit card that I had had for like four years and, um, and take like an actual vacation that wasn't work related. And yes. to this day, like most of my vacations are work related, but, um, yeah, that, that changed a lot for me that, that allowed me to kind of move forward and wipe the slate clean on something that was a, a very long debt of mine. How do you keep your vision sharp? How do I keep my vision sharp? Yes. Um, With all that goes on around, you know, how do you keep that Especially vision? in this day and age. Yeah, and that, in this day and age, and you know, with all of the noise that comes with being an owner of a business and all of the legalities of that and all of that, how do you keep your vision sharp? Yeah, I mean, my vision is really just who I am as a person. Yeah. You know, my vision is based on my grounding. Like I have a normal upbringing. I was raised in Washington, D.C., Northern Virginia area. My parents are still together. Um, you know, I witnessed, I think my, I have a very high EQ. My emotional quotient is, is a high one. Um, it rivals my IQ sometimes. <laughs> but I feel like I felt a lot as a young girl. And it's not because I experienced anything super traumatic. I just was always very interested in, human beings and their stories and the way that people feel. And I think when you take note of that as a young child, you, you know, how people feel and the way that you feel becomes part of your story. And so right. for me, it's like my vision is sharp because I, 
I said this before, but I do think I am rich in the things that matter. Yes. I have a good heart. I want the best for people. I'm not a liar. I am, I make a lot of bad business decisions because I want to help people. And then I go into debt. Like I, I just, I don't know. I think I, if skin owl didn't work, there wouldn't be another business. Okay. I might start an animal rescue agency. Like I think mm. this is just working for now and I'm able to represent myself. The I'm, I'm able to, my life resembles me with skin owl. They're kind of like the non-capitalist that became a successful capitalist, exactly. which is really interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's, and it's, it's like, like <laughs> you were trying to not be this successful businesswoman and then you just immediately became one. I know. Right. My dad, I remember like when I first moved to LA, I, the first job that I had, it was for a production company and it was more money than anybody out of college should have gotten. Whatever, it was like $35,000. But at the time you're like, cool, everybody else is making $9 an hour. Right. And then every job after that until skin owl was, worse mm -hmm. and my dad's like you're the only person in hollywood successfully working their way down and i'm like it's because i'm like that's great i have too many feelings like i just want to i'm a smart person but i also want to help and and sometimes you know those two things jockey for position so and you spoke earlier a little bit about how your own personal experience with your skin inspired you to start this company but besides that process and that your own personal mm -hmm. stuff, who would you say would be the like most inspirational, either a person in your life or some somebody on the outside, a celebrity, a social media figure? Like yeah. who inspired you when you first thought of Skin Out and started to go that direction? This is such a weird question because the people that I'm about to name have nothing to do with skincare. And that's and totally I, how it goes. Right. I mean, I will say I'm not super inspired by people in the beauty industry. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of the same things happening in the beauty industry. Interesting. Um, but <clears throat> on a personal level, uh, Meredith Powell, she, uh, she was a mentor very early on. She knows how she knows business. She knows the side of the business that I don't know the financial side, the mm -hmm. growth side, the scaling side. She was a huge asset and still is to this day. She's a dear friend. She lives in Vancouver and is like a force. Awesome. Um, uh, we talked about this before we went on the air, but Howard Stern was yes. an idol of mine for- Shout out to Howard. Yeah, I mean- <laughs> my dude. Big time. Like he was on DC 101 for a long time. My dad used to drive me to school and he would turn down all the, you know, the sexy parts on terrestrial radio. Oh. And I would always be like, how does this guy get Martha Stewart to admit that she uses a vibrator? Right. How does he do this? Yeah. Like there's something about him that is so- you just forget that you're on the air. Right. Yes. And like, there's an authenticity and an honesty. And I learned from him in a young age that if you are unabashedly who you are, you can be successful. Totally. You don't have to be anybody else. And I have, I have done my podcast and my business based on the Howard Stern method, which is so weird. It's really to cool say. to see a, like a yes. successful businesswoman come to Howard's defense. Cause I feel like sometimes Howard gets this rap for being <clears throat> like a chauvinist. And while he has his moments where you might be able to do that, I think people really look over just how brilliant he is. Oh my God. I mean, and, you know, he's a genius. He's a know? genius. And for people who like yourselves who have a podcast, yes. it is not easy to create a conversation and to make it sound this casual and to always have to be able to cut someone off when they're done talking and steer the conversation. Right. Yep. I mean, he leads the witness in the most beautiful way and makes everybody feel comfortable. And I think between him and... Ellen DeGeneres and Oprah and um, Brene Brown. I mean, that's mm. kind of my mashup. Or Strong just, list. I like yeah, that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Wow. You know, in talking to you, it's it makes it inspiring for, you know, our listeners because mm -hmm. they're sitting, some of them are sitting somewhere on a couch and they're listening to this podcast or they're watching the YouTube and they're saying, I can't create a business of my own. And mm. you're proof that yes, you can. And I watched DJ Bander while you were talking and he was intrigued by your lack of capitalism, capitalism, you know, like you profiting from your business and it being so organic because we don't get to see that a lot. Yeah. And that's why I was so happy to have you on the show. We don't get to see someone who is so genuine, who really is here to help and wants to create products that are gonna help other people get to a place where you are, which is healthy and whole and mean it like from the heart for and sure. it, it, it just shines through. And so we are happy to have you on the show today for that reason that, cause I think you're going to inspire people to get up off their couch and do what they were created to do. Yes. Right. Which is make a difference. Wins the race. And I say it all the time. Like this the is the a, race. it's not an overnight success right? world now. And business doesn't work like that. It might, but then you also might be bankrupt just as quickly or it just might be something that's like hot for a second and you really won't be able to live off of it once taxes come. So just like invest in something that is you 
invest in something that you care deeply about that when the road gets rocky and things get hard, you're still interested in it and you still want to do it because you love it and, and just find something deeper than a product. Yes. Well, right. And I love that because I think some people <clears throat> have this problem when they look at capitalists, successful people who have businesses and they kind of, you know, when people are, especially people who are like a long ways away from that success, when they're very financially unstable, there's a tendency, you know, a lot of times insecurity or whatever the reasons to kind of demonize those people and see them as like, oh, they have, you know, my lack is due to their, their prosperousness. Right. And I think that that's <laughs> a huge, and I, you know, that's sometimes the system, you know, the, the inequality in the system that leads to that. But it's just nice to see, just to say, it's nice to see somebody who, can show that it's like, nah, like regular people, down to earth people can become these successes. And at the end of the day, it's just about the will to become successful. So I yeah. think that's really great. And that's just a snapshot, by the way. Right. You know, you look at someone who's successful and that's looking at it one note, you know, oh, they have success, they are famous, they have money. But if you were to have a camera on that person all the time, right. I would love the freedom of someone that doesn't have a business. There are days where I throw my hands up and I say, I don't think I want to do this anymore because I just want to Chill. go to work and get a yeah. paycheck and right. like stand and talk by a water cooler. Like this is not all it's cracked up to be and it is what it's cracked up to be. Exactly. And I think it's fair to look at this with accuracy um, as opposed to, you know, well, that, I, grass is always green. And it's like, <clears throat> this is the most important thing. Just because you're not behind a cubicle from nine to five doesn't mean you're not putting the hours in. That's yes. right. People don't realize that. They like they <laughs> only see like the the money's in. They're like, oh, you can do whatever you want. But it's like the, the employee is the one who gets to check out and clock their ticket That's and yeah. be done at five. Yeah, it's I the, work C, from the CEO is like 24 seven. Absolutely, mm -hmm. 6.30 to 9.30 I'm working. You know, I've already been married. I've been divorced. A huge part of that was probably because I gave so much of my time to my business. Yeah. Um, it's there's sacrifices, there are losses. It's very even keeled. And, um, you know, like I wanna be able to go on vacation and have vacation time and have health insurance. So it's like, these are all things, it's just, it's a lot more even, I think, than people would realize. Exactly, so when we come back, we're gonna talk a little bit more with you about, now that you have the success of this company, you know, what else would you like to add to your life? How's that? Deal. This is Charlene. This is Lunch with the Finance Bunch on Dash Talk X. DJ Bander, we'll be right back. Sounds like a plan. How are we doing, everyone? This is DJ Bander. We're back with Lunch with the Finance Bunch. I'm with Anne, the owner of Skin Al, and my amazing host, Charlene. Um, be sure to follow us on Instagram, at the Finance Bunch, and I'm at DJ Bander. So, Anne, we were at, talking earlier about your company and your life story, and... Um, I think it's fascinating, actually. Uh, <laughs> no, honestly, and like the energy is just so He's great. He's blown away, right? Yeah, like no, no, it's really cool because I think it's really, uh, it's really important for people to hear these sort of stories. Yes. Um, and I want to talk about social media a bit because I am a social media guy, yeah, and I is. love to learn because everyone has something to teach me that I don't know, and that's how I've gotten to where I've gotten with my social media. So, one thing I would love to know is. How did you sort of come up with the concept for how you wanted to brand yourself as a company on the internet? Because I think that's something that people, it is such an art. It really and is. And it is such a craft. And it's fascinating to me, you know, hearing it from somebody like you who has a very different sort of line of business. Like I'm in the music industry and, you know, more the finance side. So how did that all come about? Did you just start posting from another account or did you have somebody professional help you? Yeah, I mean, to this day, I do all of the social media um, for the Parliament Project Social Media, which yeah. is our dinner series, and Skin Owl, which is obviously the skincare line. Um, I take great joy in it. Like, I've always loved it. And, you know, I think what people can always rely up, rely on when it comes to Skin Owl is it's it can be a little crass, not like super crass, but we'll cut on our Stern Insta crass. stories. No, God, no. There's nobody <laughs> sitting on a speaker. Um, it's, it's, there's a lot of humor. The dynamic of our team is ridiculous. Um, uh, it's very real. It's kind of like the girls and the guys, the guy next door. Mm. And, um, I think like in the beginning I was very consumed with, okay, I need to have all the colors and I need to have not so much white space and it needs to look like a vision board. Mm. And it's really cool that over the last year, especially with like the new Instagram algorithm, that's kind of, um, sabotaging the engagement of certain posts that 
this authentic kind of yes. iPhone photo is showing back up on Instagram. Did you say that? So the super filtered, super like here I am like modeling this thing. That's it's dying. It's it's like almost dead in the water. Mm. And now big brands, huge brands are having just these unfiltered pictures. Everything's very body positive, acne positive, skin positive. So again, like we were saying before, authenticity is like at a all time high more than ever. So I think like going to your question. Yeah. It's always been, um, I've navigated some weirdness, like trying to figure out what our voice is on social media, but now it's, you know, good looking, attractive photos that mm -hmm. make people want to try the skincare coupled with very unfiltered moments in our day. Mm. Thanks okay. to Insta stories and Insta live. That's cool. That's really cool. I love that. Now I'm not a good, I'm not good on social media. Everybody knows that. So mm -hmm. the tips. You, We're working on it, Char. Yeah. We got, we got yeah. you. I'm like, I'm in school. <laughs> <laughs> we got you. Girl. But you know, I, and looking at your Instagram, I noticed that it's very balanced. And what I mean mm -hmm. by that is that it educates you and tells a story all the way through. And I feel like through your Instagram, I get to know you as a person, know your company, know your values. And also I get to see, like you said, the quirkiness, right? And so I think that gives the person a chance to relax. And how do you, do you just organically say, I'm going to take five of this and two of that, or do you just let it flow and kind of let it go organically? Um, I mean, I, I'm on this like kick now where I'm doing like, logistically two products and then a human being photo. Yes. And I kind of like the aesthetic of that. <laughs> yeah. But in general, it's like, I, I had like a hard look at the human psychology, I think mm -hmm. over the last year. And mm -hmm. if someone shows me a picture of themselves, a dear friend of mine was to show me a picture of themselves that was vulnerable and kind of, they didn't look great or they were making fun of themselves in some way. Um, those are always the photos that get the most laughs and like are the most appreciated because it's real. Right. Mm -hmm. And why would it be any different with our social media? Like I, I'm, I, yes, this is a business mm -hmm. and I do want to show people that I do have good skin right. and it's been a long road, but I, you know, I have an ego. I care about my skin glowing and I want to look good and have cool makeup on, but I also not to a fault. Right. Like I'm, if I don't get a bra on by noon, that's very, that's real. That's right. the life of a CEO. That's like right. you wake up, you're in pajamas, you look like shit. And, and like, you know, you clean up well, and exactly. that's sometimes how it works. And so I want people to have a real, I, how, the best way to phrase it is I don't want to be on the bad side of history, which is making people feel worse about their life. And that's yes. the bottom line. Totally. I just want to make people feel like there's nothing to hide here. I love it. So love when it. you talk about what your, um, brand has done on social media and it would like specific, like, you know, Instagram versus Google. Would you say that the majority of your sales come from people who are browsing Instagram and come across your, your, your profile and like, Oh, I want to definitely check it out. Or would you say people are Googling skincare? My face is a mess. Help me. Yeah. And, and then and they skin out and it's like, Oh, this looks cool and go that way. Yes. I mean, so out of all social media networks, 42% of all social media that sends people to skinall.com is from Instagram. That's very interesting. So, and that's, a, that's a hugely that's in part huge to the number. whole yes. clicking to shop thing. Mm -hmm. Like now that you can tag a product as yes. opposed, just like you would a person yeah. that's changed the business. That's changed the game for us because you don't need to bitly link or link in bio or that's anything right. well, like that. Exactly. People, people we talk about through. this all the time. It's all about the less steps. Now people, if yes. it's more than two clicks, they don't care. They don't care. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yep. A hundred percent. So Instagram has been, massive in that. And our Google analytics show that, um, I think like 35% of skinall.com are still first time like visitors. Mm, that's great. So people are still hearing about it from right. God knows what there's a lot of like girlfriend and boyfriend marketing. I call it. So people, totally. the product works insanely. It works overnight. A lot of people say that and this is like no bullshit. It's a very fast and efficient product. People notice dramatic results in their skin the next day. The next day. And then people are like, oh my God, I have to tell someone. So then they tell their mom or their aunt or their sister or their cousin or their brother. And then so much of it is like a game of telephone. So we want our listeners um, to know how to get in contact with you. How do we find Skin Owl? Where are you? And how do we get in touch with you? Absolutely. You can uh, visit the um, website at www.skinowl.com. Um, our social media handles are on Twitter and Instagram are at skin owl, S K I N O W L. Um, you can email us at info at skin If you have any skincare issues, um, or skin issues as a whole acne 
premature aging, stress, fatigue. We got you. And love it. Yeah. Visit us and endorse me on LinkedIn. Yes, yes LinkedIn. I was just telling somebody, people do not LinkedIn. underestimate the power of LinkedIn. Yes. Get, that's, those are real people yeah. with real business to offer you. See, that's it. Now that's, that's the part I know, LinkedIn. Okay. <laughs> you start on play. She got that LinkedIn popping. <laughs> but you know, it was a pleasure having you on the show. It was a simple pleasure and we'd love to have you come back. Absolutely. And let us know how your business is growing. And this is Charlene and DJ Bander over there. You want to take us out? Oh, absolutely. Thank you everyone for being here. You've been listening to Lunch with the Finance Bunch. Be sure to follow us at the Finance Bunch and we will see you again soon. Thank you for watching everyone. Be sure to find us on Instagram at the Finance Bunch and listen to us every Tuesday on Dash Talk X.